You might remember the last time we had left Moses. He was in the wilderness of Paran, and the spies had come back. Ten of the spies gave an evil report with what we would call fake news. It caused the assembly to want to rebel against God's plan that they would enter right away into the promised land. Because of that, the Lord said, you will turn back and for 40 years, you're going to wander in the desert because you did not trust my plan for having you enter right away into the promised land. So we're just after that moment where there's that declaration, they're gonna spend 40 years in the desert. So what happens? We see in Numbers chapter 14, that there are some of the people that decide, hey, we weren't able to enter in, we made a mistake, let's try to enter into the promised land now. And they had a terrible sign. Those 10 spies who gave the evil report died of a plague right before their eyes. And so Moses says, do not go into that land. You will be struck down before your enemies, for the Lord is not coming among you, and you will die by the sword. So they decided to go against the Lord's wishes. This time when they wanted him, when he wanted them not to go into the land, they decided to go. So whatever the Lord is asking, they seem to want the very opposite. And Moses has in some ways to be the intermediary between this people and God. And so they are defeated by the people that are there, the Amalekites and the Canaanites. So they continue back into the desert and they settle into the land of the Amorites. And then Moses sends, Mo, Moses is told to go and spy on the people that are in Jazer. And so he sends the spies there and they see that there are the Amorites who are there and they are afraid. And so what does the Lord say? Do not be afraid, for I have delivered this king into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to King Sion of the Amorites who reigned in Heshbon. And so the people of Israel is called to trust in the Lord. And that's so important for our faith walk. Every day we're called to trust in the Lord. And what's our big obstacle is that we don't trust. We think that, oh, I can do it better. I don't need the Lord, or I don't need to listen to what he's saying. This is a time of true discernment, of listening to what the Lord is telling us to, to do in the depths of our hearts. And so the Israelites are coming to this new land. And this is a very interesting part. Numbers chapter 22. The Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Jericho is a very interesting town. Jericho is the oldest inhabited town on the face of the planet Earth, 10,000 years old. It is also the lowest in altitude on the face of the planet Earth, 1,200 feet below sea level right next to the Jordan River, very close to the Dead Sea. A beautiful town, beautiful city, beautiful people, and you have a chance to go there and visit in the Holy Land. And so they are coming to this area across the river from Jericho. And the king of Moab is terrified because there were so many people. And he says, this horde of people is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So, the son of Zippor, who is the king, says, I will go and talk to Balaam. Balaam is a man that is able to give blessings and to give curses. So he calls upon Balaam so that he will curse this people of Israel. And what happens? Balaam, does he end up cursing the people of Israel? No, this is what he says, Numbers chapter 24. How beautiful are your tents, Jacob, how your dwelling place is Israel. Like valleys they spread out, like gardens beside a river, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets, their seed will have abundant water. Their kingdom will be greater than Agog, their kingdom will be exalted. 
So that did not please Balak, that Balaam blessed Israel. And this is what Balak says. I summon you to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them these three times. Now leave at once and go home. So what does that tell us? When the Lord's blessing is upon us, we have to have confidence. And we can ask the Lord's blessing every day, especially as we go through this time that is difficult, this time of uncertainty. Let us ask for the Lord's blessing upon us, upon our families. Just like Moses had to ask for the Lord's blessing every day for these 40 additional years of his mission when he's having to accompany the people of Israel. So when we have a mission, when we have a time that seems unending, a time that seems difficult, let us not hesitate to call upon the Lord to give us his blessing. May God bless you.